Good morning. Today we are with Professor Chavez Munayer. He is the chief of the neurology department at the Limoges University Hospital in France. He has been one of my mentors and professor, and also the professor of many doctors around the world. So thank you, Dr. Munayer, for your time. Thank you for your invitation, Rodrigo. I'm really very happy to uh, share this video with you and to answer your questions. So, um, I know that uh, this uh, video is dedicated for the link, uh, and uh, the link is a part of our uh, history and our, um, let's say, grow up, because we grew up with the link, and uh, so I'm happy to, to answer to your questions. What do you think is the role of the clinical research in the development of this specialty? So clearly, I think that um, it's mandatory that we will have clinical researchers because uh, we still have a lot of beliefs in our job. So um, we have beliefs so uh, regarding the material that we use in the treatments and whatever. So clearly, uh, it's mandatory to continue in the cl clinical research. Uh, but not only so, we have to go through the clinical, but we have to go as well through the, the fundamental research uh, regarding the devices, but not only uh, the chemical, as you know, here uh, in the department. So my uh, works a lot on the chemical um, uh, coating of the devices and all these things. So uh, the future will be around all of this, so chemical and, uh, let's say, uh, uh, genetics and whatever, but now we are not at this stage, uh, let's say, uh, fundamental and, uh, and the clinical just to, uh, across those beliefs that we have in our field. Who should be in charge of the research? Should be universities, hospitals, governments or uh, companies or a combination of this? It should be a combination of both because for the moment, so all of us, we are, uh, we, we beyond two universities and uh, two uh, academic uh, uh, field. So uh, whatever is our country, our origins and whatever. So uh, the, the, the question is, do we have uh, uh, some interest to get a, a collaboration with the companies clearly yes because the interest of the companies is to develop their products and uh, new devices and this is our own interest as well so why not to work with the companies in this field you have trained a lot of doctors around the world what do you think about the impact and the importance of that I don't know. So well, I'm not the only one. Huh? So as you know, so we are, uh, the, the, the transmission is a, uh, is a mission for every one of us. So uh, this will be your uh, mission in the future and uh, all the generation which is crossing the years and whatever. So it's, uh, uh, the transmission is really very important. So I, I'm proud to, uh, to have a lot of friends that I train all around the world and they are making a wonderful job taking care of patients in their countries. And I'm sure that uh, they are making job of a high level. What is the next step in the endovascular management of brain AVMs? So, as you know, um, some years ago, 20 years ago, we were using only glue in the treatment of AVM. So uh, uh, neurosurgeons were considering that uh, uh, the endovascular treatment is a uh, um, adjunction treatment to uh, a real one, which would be, uh, would be uh, the surgery and, or the radio surgery. Um, with the, the non-adhesive liquid material like onyx and, uh, and, and the squid or fill, so we increased the rate of total occlusion of the AVM because in the past we were around 15 to 20 percent of total occlusion of the AVMs with the glue. Uh, nowadays, so um, now with the, with the, with the um, uh, non-adhesive liquid material, we increased till 50, 60 percent. And now with the new techniques, uh, so let's say that the venous approach is not new uh, anymore because we started uh, 15 years ago to make this uh, this approach uh, with the non-adhesive liquid material. So with those techniques, uh, the pressure cooker, the balloon, uh, double human balloon uh, navigation and injection. So we are more, over more than 90% of total uh, occlusion of the AVMs by endovascular approach. So now we can say that this technique, so the endovascular technique 
is becoming much better than all the others because the radiotherapy is limited by the size, as you know, and the surgery is limited by the location of the avian. For us, there is no limitation. The access is becoming better and better thanks to this additional access from the vein. Do you think we should concentrate the experience of avian treatment? So clearly, this is a rare disease, of course. Uh, so it will be pretentious to say, uh, I will make it and not my, uh, my neighbor, right? But uh, clearly, because of the fact that it's a rare, uh, a rare disease, perhaps uh, uh, the experience should be concentrated somewhere. Let's say um, a few, uh, few centers in each country could manage those uh, kind of, uh, of AVMs. And so because of the fact as well, that the management of the AVM is a multi-modality management. So you have surgery and the radiotherapy and on the vascular. And so regarding the centers, the experience of each team differs from the other one. And so we cannot adopt for the moment a clear strategy by saying that the uh, AVM should be treated in, uh, in this way. So this is why uh, for me, so few centers should be uh, taking care of those uh, AVMs and so they should have a common expertise between the three modalities. How do we train doctors for brain AVMs? We, uh, so people who want to be uh, uh, in charge of AVM, they should be in a center which has a, 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 a big turnover, right? So a, a, a regular thing, a turnover for, uh, for the treatment of those, uh, th those lesions. Uh, as we said, the <clears throat> they are a rare disease. So um, to my opinion, uh, uh, to be treat, uh, trained for the AVM treatment, so uh, we should uh, access to a center who has, uh, 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 which has uh, the, uh, a big, a big amount of uh, of cases done, and uh, to spend time inside. So just to learn not only the technique but uh, but the strategy as well, uh, and uh, to uh, build our own strategy to treat the AVM because, as we said. They, this is a multimodality, and so uh, in the multimodalities, you have some part or some arm of the modalities which is uh, stronger than the other one, and whatever. So, this is why uh, the treatment and the, the care of the AVM uh, should be uh, done in big centers which are managing uh, a lot of, uh, the, of those diseases. What are the next frontiers we should conquer in endovascular therapy? Yeah, so we have to to uh, to, to go uh, in parallel with the um, with the other uh, other concepts of the uh, vascular disease treatment. So we are in the uh, so if we want to resume our job, so either we will occlude vessels or we will dilate vessels. Uh, so perhaps th there is another concept of the treatment which could be uh, uh, chemical or genetics, as we said. At the beginning, so we we shouldn't see in those techniques or the, those developments a a, a a concurrent technique to our field, now. but we should go in the same uh, in the same parallel with the with those uh, those techniques, and perhaps we should adopt ourselves so uh, those techniques to uh, to uh, develop uh, the uh, uh, the treatment so to, to improve the treatment of those diseases. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for this interview. Thank you for, uh, for uh, this interview. I'm really very happy to share it with you.